Good morning, everybody. You're fine? You had coffee? You had something to eat as well? Because you're going to move a little bit. My name is Cécile Bastien Remy, as Tuti just uh, presented me, and I am a public speaking Jedi. It's so much cooler than coach, and also because I truly believe in mastering a skill. I truly believe in working with values, and I truly believe in communicating the knowledge to my clients. So today, confidence, present with confidence. I'm not alone on stage. I would like to introduce Marina Chipak. She's going to do the graphic recording of the session. That means that you don't have to take any notes. That means that you have to listen to me. That means that you can be fully present and enjoy and believe and trust yourself because what we, is important for you, you will automatically remember. So at the end, I will invite you to take many pictures of the graphic that's going to be taking form. Now, this is a workshop. That means I will need your participation. And I'm not going to give you an agenda because I would like this presentation to be like a good Hollywood movie. You don't know where you're going, but at the end, it will all make sense. All right? Now, before I start, we need a definition of what is confidence. And I want to hear that from you. Who would like to volunteer and give me a definition or description of what is being confident? Yes, stand up so everybody can hear you. Lack of fear. Lack of fear. Anybody else? Outcome independent. Sorry, I didn't hear. Outcome independent. Okay, who else? Stand up, please. Believing in yourself and what you're saying. Good, sounds good. Anybody else? Making? Oh, I like that. I like that. That's really cool. It's very poetic, and I like the, the image. Fantastic. I like to define confidence with a metaphor. Confidence is going after Moby Dick, you know the big whale, on a rowboat and taking the tartar sauce with you. Meaning that before you start, when you have confidence, you already won. You know that this is going to be a success. And everybody needs confidence because it makes you look skillful, capable, trustworthy. I said that there will be no agenda to the session, but I'm going to give you a little bit of clues. I see ourselves like a black box. And for confidence, we need the in, we process as a black box, and the out. So the first part of the workshop is going to work on the in. What is it that we need within ourselves to be confident? And you all have a little piece of paper with some colors. Okay? Now, I would like you to group yourself by colors. But you have to come with me at the back. Everybody. So can I have the, which color do you have? Okay, we have the group, blue group. So you just come and see Jack, and everybody has the blue paper co goes close to Jack. Then we have uh, the red one. Can you please come? What's your name? Castagna, the red one. What other colors do we have? We have green. Green, green, we are going to go on the other side. You follow the green man. That's fine, it's okay, we'll work it out. Which other colors? Yellow, yellow, come here, come with me, yellow. Hopla. Yellow colors here. Oh, I like that, this is moving. Yes, fantastic. All right. Who doesn't have colors? You have colors that has not been called. You're the orange group. All right, so how many colors are? One, two, three, four. 
I'm going to us uh, Two blues, okay, two blues, two blues, so there might be some more. Okay, can you make the red one? Can you make a line? The blue one, you stand in front of the red. Can you do that? All right, now the green one, you make one column, and I would like the yellow one to stand in front of the green one. All right? And the red, orange. I think you're going to make a line on your own if that's okay. So if you can make like two lines, so how many of you? Five, five on one side, five on the other one. All right, fantastic. Now, all right, okay. I'm going to give instructions. This is the first exercise. Thank you so much for taking part. There are, you are right now in a setup that is called a corridor of compliments. And each one of you represents a brick of confidence. And your job is to give a compliment. This is very easy, but there is a trick. The person you're going to give a compliment to, you have to make the best assumption on non-physical talent. You have beautiful blue eyes. I'm not going to tell you that your talent, you were born with it, but I can tell you, you're precious. You're special, you're ambitious, and every time you're going to give a compliment, each brick, because you will be the first to walk down, I'm going to look at you in the eye and touch you on the shoulder, and I'm going to give you a compliment, and you're very talented. And as a walker, I'll come back after to that, you can say nothing or say, a, grace, a graceful thank you, all right? Now, you are going to be moving. So I think, can I ask you to move here? Because it will be easier because you will be moving. So Sonia will start walking and Yvette will give her a compliment. You give her a compliment and we go like that. Everybody, you have to walk all the way down <laughs> the corridor of compliments. And as soon as Sonia is two or three person, then Pam, you start walking, and we go like that. Once you're done, can you just lift your hand so I know that everybody went through, all right? And with that, we're going to put some music, emotional music. I'm putting you way outside your confidence zone. I'm loving it, all right? So the music is coming. Sonia, you start, and every single brick of confidence have must, absolutely must, give a compliment. You can't move unless you heard something. <laughs> All right? Let's go for it. Music. Jack, you start. So, Castania, you're going to give a compliment. And then it will be you, and then you move all the way. Everybody, so you, 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 should, you should get a bit closer. You should get more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. You can give yourself a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Now we have to do a little bit of thinking now. We can all hug each other at the end, I promise you. But first, I really want to thank you for taking and stepping out of your comfort zone. I know for some it's difficult to give compliments, and for some, difficult to receive them. And you have this little piece of paper, and I would like to give you one minute to write something on a piece of paper, or in your mind, it doesn't really matter. But just make a mental note, because this exercise is completely and simply to make you aware of something, a big element of the confidence is self-esteem. So the question is, how did you feel giving compliments to somebody else? And the second question is, how did I feel receiving compliments from somebody I don't know? I'll leave you a bit of time to write a couple of notes on that. 
How did I feel about giving a compliment? And how did I feel about receiving a compliment? What's important in the self-esteem is I've noticed and looked at a lot of people, the one that give compliments very easily, they are the one that understood that their own chapter four cannot be compared with somebody else chapter 20. And that's very important. You have your unique print in your life and whatever you're going to achieve your goal, you will do it your own way. And that's something very important, not to compare apples and pear. You're unique. And the objective you want to reach confidently is really completely unique to yourself. And confidence is also the way to accept compliments, the confidence of your own ability, without being arrogant. What is it that I can do? What are my value? What can I provide? And that's something also very important to feel comfortable with. It works as your safety net. It works as well as a way of saying yo, no, <laughs> to some project or yes to others. But it really gives you clarity as well on how you want to perceive. So that was the first part of the input. Something to think about self-esteem. Now, the second part, you need to stand up again, but you can stay at your seat place. But please stand up. Please stand up. Um, I had the luck to get to know Runa Magnus Dottir. She is quite an exceptional lady. In 2008, her country is Iceland, and in 2008, the country of Iceland went into total bankrupt. And their entire economy was based on finance and the finance was a chaos. Runa put in one room 1,000 people representing exactly every single person of Iceland, and what they did was to think about what's next for the country. What is it that they want to go, confidently? And thanks to this exercise, she managed to redefine the purpose of her own country. And that's when they started to develop the uh, touristic industry because this is the only country in the world that believes in elves and trolls. And they completely capitalize on that. How cool is that? <laughs> so one exercise she was doing was to gain clarity. So just spread your arm like a big tree, all right? And look at your palm and make a mental note of just one for the time being. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Make a mental note of what are my passion. Personally, my passion is all about dancing on public speaking and being on stage. So just make a mental note. Passion. Then scroll down on the first route here, again, make a mental note. What are the skills that I have? Well, I speak French and English, and I'm a jolly good dancer. Then we have two arms. So we have another tree. And on the big branches here, what is it that I stand for? What is it that I do not stand for? What are my values? My values, I use myself as a, an, an example, my values are about justice, truth, resilience, and creativity. Make a mental note of your own. And again, you slide down the truck and you find the root, and that's the big one, what is my purpose in life? It's a big one. Now, Runa, she works all about the sexiness, 
And what she does is, when you cross the tree, you're in front of, you know, female attributes that I do not share with her, unfortunately. And she calls it the sexy factor. I call it the core of confidence. If you have, if you know about your passion, if you know about your values, if you know about your um, skills and your purpose, everything is clear. You have more or less answers for everything. This is the clarity. And this is the, please sit down, thank you very much. And again, I am not a life coach, but you cannot talk about confidence on stage unless you feed that confidence in. And this is very important elements to take into account. And now we are going to move on to the second part, which is the output. So what we saw with the first part is the self-esteem is a strong element for confidence on stage or for presenting. And also the, what we call in French, I don't know if there were an English word for that, la congruence, like when everything comes together, okay? When you have that clarity. Anything else that you think that, that will help the inner confidence? Am I covering everything? Wow, well, that's cool. Right, now we move on to the out part. So you have a big presentation. And just the thought of it makes your palms sweaty. Ugh. And this part is all going to be giving you techniques and tricks and I'm going to go through a chronological order from weeks or months before your presentation until the time you are on stage. So to start with, one element that is absolutely crucial is... Do you know it? Preparation. Preparation, 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 preparation. And there is a little story that comes all the way from ancient Greeks. Demosthenes, who knows this guy? Okay, Demosthenes was actually the best public speaker in Greece. He was actually a politician and a lawyer. But the first time he presented to the hemicycle, it was a complete disaster. Because he went there and said, oh, I've got some ideas I'm going to talk about. Great. But he had a stutter. He couldn't find his word. The way he presented was, is like, was like an octopus trying to put socks to an octopus, you know, where everything goes everywhere. When he came out of this bad experience, he met with an actor on the way back home. And he said, well, I, I want you to teach me how I can be one of the best speakers. And the actor said, yeah, but it takes techniques, it takes time, and it takes preparation. So when he came back home, he dig himself into a cellar and he shaved half of his head. Why? Because to be able to go out in the hemicycle, he had to look the part. So he had to wait until his hair were growing back. It took three months. Don't shave your head, please. <laughs> or half of it. It will look a bit funny. But anyway, it took him three months to prepare for his next presentation into the hemicycle. And he worked hard. He rehearsed the words. He rehearsed the structure. He plays his voice. He learned the power of pauses. So it's all about pre 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 preparation. Help yourself. Don't shave half of your head, but prepare when you have a presentation. And that's a very important point. Now we move closer to the presentation and we're on the day you're about to present. Some people are just extremely nervous. And that's another trick I would like to share with you. Stop drinking coffee for hours before. I can see some people just nodding like that. I know I only had one this morning. I'm dying for my second one but it just dries out your mouth and it doesn't help with, sometimes it's the butterfly, but sometimes it's a storm in your stomach, you know, and you have to be close to the ladies. So really, truly, try to drink as much water as you can. Help yourself. A 
another element that is important is the breathing. Breathing is good. Breathing keeps you alive. But one of the um, ways for your body to tell you that you're under stress is to shorten the breath and you don't get oxygen. And it gets worse and worse and worse. So you don't have to do extremely tricky pranayama, whatever you call it, exercise. Just breathe in and breathe out. It starts like that. It's as simple as that. And really, it does help. So we've done the preparation. You've got to don't drink coffee. We've done the breathing is good. Now, there is something that is extremely important and you can do actually whenever you want. is the visualization of your success. When I prepared for this workshop, I imagine you all at the end giving me a standing ovation. Get the hint? And if you imagine yourself having a fun time on stage, if you imagine yourself having everybody clapping, everybody smiling and agreeing with you, it will help you tremendously the day you're going to present. One of the things I've noticed was, uh, if you look, if, are, you, are you into sports? Do you like sports? Do you watch sports that you on, on the whole thing? Okay. One of the things I've noticed was the journalist asking the people, the sportswomen and men, were you scared? And the sportsman and small woman said, no, I wasn't scared. But I was excited. They prepared so much for that specific day. They're so happy to be there. Well, it's the same with your presentation. Be excited. Be positively and confidently. She's scared, but excited as well. Very important. So the preparation, the no drinking coffee, the breathing, the vis visualization. You're about to get on stage three minutes before getting on stage. Who likes to watch the TEDx? Who knows Amy Cuddy? That's it? Okay, ah, thank you. Right, the way I stand here right now, it's called a power stance. Amy Cuddy is a scientific lady from the US, and she does a lot of study on non-verbal communication. And she made an experiment asking some people to take some lower stance, so where your body tends to be inward, where you want to hide and run away. And some people with a much stronger stance, a bit like Wonder Woman, I'm her sister. You know, or even like total alpha male. So you, there are a couple of position on the, on the chair and uh, like standing up. What, and then she, what she did in the study is they, they drew blood from the two groups, the one with the power stance and the one with the weak stance. And they realize that there is a proportion of hormones that changes in your bloodstream. So the one that were like that, I think the, the uh, hormones were uh, the cortisol. I'm not sure about this one. But this one is the hormone stress. And that doesn't make you feel happy, that doesn't make you confident. The other one, huh, that was the testosterone that was higher. And with the testosterone, the guys know that, they feel invincible. But not only the people felt that they were more confident, but they were also being perceived as more confident. So this is actually a very powerful tool you can use, and it only requires three minutes. Three minutes. So you can go and hide in the toilet and go, whoa! <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> but it does work, so I encourage you to find something perhaps a little bit more subtle. I don't know if that's subtle. I'll call it subtle. <laughs> right. So the preparation, the no coffee drinking, the visualization, what else did I talk about? I talk about the breathing, 
I talked about the power stance, and now you're about to come on stage. And the fear is here. And it's not fun. When I'm in stage, it could just be also entering the boardroom to make your presentation. Or having a talk with your mom and dad. Sometimes it just feels as, as well as that. And you feel the fear is coming. So how do you handle the fear when the fear has to go away? Well, one thing I've been using is to acknowledge the fear. I'm here in front of you. I was scared, but I knew fear was coming, and I treated my fear like a cat. You know, when you start typing on the computer, really have important email to send, and the cat comes around and says, hey, I'm going to lay down across your keyboard. Right? Fear is exactly the same. Fear is a little animal. So you need to acknowledge the fear, but you need to focus on something else. So what I did was, I focused on my microphone. I'm not used to a microphone, so I thought, okay, this is actually quite comfortable. This is not hurting my ear. I've got new shoes on, but they're very comfortable. So I took my focus away and made mental note, non-judgmental, that helped me to think about something else but fear. And that really, really helped. So that's it, you're about to speak. And for the next exercise, I need three volunteers on stage. I'm going to use my, demographic, my demo, democratic finger. Yes, please, stand up, please come. I want a lady, come on, ladies. Yes, you want to go on stage, that's perfect. Big round of applause. Fantastic. All right. Um, our mind is able to read emotions, okay, with the body language, with the strength of your voice, the way you say things, your facial expression. We can read people's emotions if they're lying or not, if they're authentic or not, if they're confident, if they're sad or whatever. We can just read that. And th this exercise will be to make a couple of points on what does confidence look like. But first, Chris. Chris is going to not, you know, talk about confidence. I, I would like you to read the first volunteer number one. Chris, your volunteer number one. I took snippets of Donald Trump, Republican nomination acceptance speech. <laughs> Because talking about confidence is a pretty good example, although it's borderline with arrogance, but you know. So, borderline, borderline yeah, you know. I don't want, I mean, there is no political judgment. I'm just using tools there, okay? Could you please read that, but you're very, very sad. You have to read it with the saddest possible way. Can you do that? Okay, you're on stage. You're owning the stage, remember? I've made billions of dollars in business making deals. Now I'm going to make our country rich again. I'm going to turn our bad trade agreements into great ones. Thank you. Big round of applause. So Chris was sad. How can we, about his voice, what was the voice about? Soft. Is body language timid? Okay. Now, Stefano. Haha. <laughs> I know him. You already attended. Uh, actually, can you just stand and perhaps with the microphone it would be better. Yes. <laughs> He's not that small. Come on. <laughs> can you hear me? Fine. Right. Volunteer number two, Stefano. Can yes. you read that with? Complete boredom. Boredom. I'm going to work very hard to repeal the language and the protect free speech 
of all Americans. <laughs> it is time to show that the world war, that America is back and better and stronger than ever before. Bravo. Thank you. I vote for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Fantastic. So again, boredom. What are the codes of boredom? Tell me. Monotone, that's right. On the hand, on the pocket. Okay. Now. Andrea, you have a lot of ease. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay. You're going to be the confident one. You go on stage. All right. You're volunteer number three. That's a tough one. <laughs> okay. So. To all Americans tonight, in all our cities and towns, I make this promise. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you. Another round of applause for the, for the volunteers. Right, so when you're on stage, the codes for confidence, what are they? Strong voice. You don't talk too quickly. You don't talk too slow. Tone is changing. The pause is, you are completely comfortable with silence. You own the place. The body language was more tricky with the microphone, and, but I've got, I've got a trick. Once you hear that trick, your life will never be the same. I can confidently make this statement. The next time you present, you will be thinking about today, right now. Do you want to hear the trick? Yes. Really? All right. OK. So I lived six years in Edinburgh, and when I was in Edinburgh, I danced flamenco quite a lot. And I'm a more of a ballet dancer, where you know you, you know you're a bit stiff and everything. And I was watching the, the flamenco dancers, and I just couldn't get that pride attitude, that complete confidence. So I went to see the teacher, and I asked him, okay, what is it that they have that makes them so confident? I mean, you wouldn't approach the lady. They had like this aura. And you say, well, that easy. Everybody has a pair of nipples. You direct them towards the sun always. <laughs> OK? I'm making a mental note of each one of you. I'll be watching you. Are they networking with confidence? You know, okay. The muscles have to be a bit, you know, you need to work a little bit. But it's actually not that bad. It's not, you know, completely. It's, it's, but it makes you feel. Again, it brings back to Amy Cuddy trying to get into your bloodstream the right hormones to make you feel confident. And also, when you're presenting to an audience, if I talk to the audience here, I'm shutting them off over, over there. But if I open, I can go over there and talk to you, but you still feel included. So it's okay. The way to memorize it, nipples, son, fair enough. But you will remember it. So this is the end of my presentation. What I would like you to take away with you not only the nipples with the sun, okay? Although I know that's already embedded. But I would like to invite you to applaud Marina for the great drawing she's made. And be yourself, be confident. Thank you very much.